Hey there, welcome to Prog Monster. My name is Murph and I am the host of this show, a show dedicated to progressive rock, hard rock, heavy metal, and other forms of rock music. So tonight we're doing our look back at a classic rock album that features a band that I really like quite a bit. Actually, they're in my group of seven, which is now my group of eight. I keep forgetting that. But anyways, this album I got about eight weeks ago and uh, it's been in my no it's only in eight weeks oh eight months ago sorry and it's been in my playlist about five to six months uh it's grown on me continuously i think it reaches the top of these group of this group stuff now jethro tull stand up this is a fantastic album um it just gets better every time i listen to it and i hear more and more stuff and so one thing about this group i like is that you can listen to them for years and then you you'll sit down one day and just listen to the album and there's things on there that you never heard before and you know they, did they just put that stuff in there how did that happen but there's lots of stuff on this that's really good okay so um we're gonna be talking about it of course um this is their second album um i don't really have the first album and not really listen to it a lot but from what i've been told and what i've stuff I've heard on the radio and stuff um this is the beginning of their kind of progressive era it's it still has a lot of that blues kind of sound to it um some harmonica which is to me kind of synonymous with blues music there's some of that on the here um there's a lot of instrumentation on here especially by Ian Anderson he plays a lot of stuff so before we get going too far into it, I'll just give you the kind of basic rundowns on it. It's stats if you prefer. Okay, so it was released July 25th, uh, 1969 in the UK, and then on September the 29th in the US, the same year. Uh, studio was, Mo was Morgan Studios for the almost the entire album, except for one track, Beret, which appeared, uh, which they recorded at Olympic Stadium, both, uh, Olympic Sound, both in London. It's about 37, 38 minutes in length, pretty standard amount of time for an album of its time period. Um, it was on Island labels in the UK and reprise labels in the US. Uh, produced by Terry Elliott, Terry Ellis and Ian Anderson. So I, I like the artwork on the cover quite a bit. You can see it's a drawn thing, really, really detailed. And if you look at the inside, you'll see that they have them walking away. <laughs> kind of different. Um, so anyways, um, I bought this album. I was lucky to get it. Um, I've been looking for it for a while. Not an easy album to find, but I had left uh, uh, request for it at a store and completely forgot about it I did this like five six years ago I did this and didn't even think about it again and and uh, one day out of the blue they called me and said oh we have this album in if you're still interested and I said oh yeah absolutely went over and got it <laughs> immediately <laughs> I've been looking for it now I've seen it a few places but that isn't that always the way it is you know, you're looking for something you're looking for it you can never find it then bang you get it Next thing you find it in 10 different places. That always happens. Okay, so um, that's the uh, kind of stats about it. Um, uh, the personnel on it, uh, Ian Anderson, of course, he's the leader of the band and the main focus of Jethro Tull. He does vocals, flute, acoustic guitar, Hammond organ, piano, mandolin, and he calls it mouth organ, but basically it's harmonica. Uh, Martin Barr, he plays electric guitar and additional flute on two or three other tracks, I believe. I'm not sure. Uh, track number two. I think it's on Jeffrey Goes to Lancaster. He does a bit on that. He does one on Reasons for Waiting as well. Um, also, Clive, uh, the next guy, um, Glenn Cormick, he plays bass on the, the entire album. Very good bass player, I think, I might add. Clive Bunker, he's the drummer and percussionist of the band. So those are the those are the four that you see here on the album cover, and are credited as Jethro Tull on the album. There's some additional stuff that goes on. Terry Ellis also um, is he does production on the album, but he also does. Um, it was his idea to come up with this cover for the album, which I think is neat. 
Andy Johns. Uh, he played bass on Look. Uh, uh, sorry, I forgot where I was. Uh, looking for Looking into the Sun. He plays bass on that track. D. Palmer uh, does the string arrangement and does the conducting on um, Reasons for Waiting. And then James, I think I got it crashing, who does the cover art. He does he does the actual art on the album cover. Right? I think I probably got his name wrong. Grashen? Grashen? Does anybody correct me if I got that wrong? Not really that good with names. I can barely say my own sometimes. Okay, so that's the personnel for the album. So the album itself has 10 tracks. Um, there's no bad tracks on this album. This album to me is destined to become a master album for me which would then give Jethro Tull three I think um, Songs from the Wood Minstrel in the Gallery F4 actually Aqualung and this one um, this one it's gotta wait it's five year period to get there though because that's my prerequisite gotta have at least five years to be a master album because things go south sometimes with albums and they don't really make it there but as it is right now, it's definitely definitely a number two, probably a number one. Give it another few more weeks, it'll be a number one. Uh, if it be a number one with me, you gotta kind of have at least a year behind your belt and it doesn't have quite that yet, but top, top billing for a number two for sure. Um, anyways, uh, the songs on the album, there's 10 tracks. No bad tracks on this album. So, um, when I say my favorites, that doesn't mean that the songs that aren't my favorites on here are not good tracks. There's no bad ones on this album. I, I like it top to bottom. It's kind of bluesy for a for my Jethro Tull, the Jethro Tull that I come to like. I like tend to like them to be a little more folky and a little more progressive, but the bluesy part works well with them. A New Day Yesterday, very, um, it's a very busy song. And lots of heavy bass and drums on that. I like that quite a bit. It starts off the album with a bang, as to, so to speak. Um, Jeffrey goes to Leicester's Leicester Square. Some real good guitar and mandolin on this, I think. Um, just like uh, noticing that right away. That I mean, everything else is good on it too, but I, I really find those two outstanding on this particular track. Um, Beret, of course, which is the well-known song, one of the well-known songs on the album. Um, some real stand-up classic flute playing from Ian Anderson on this. And the bass is also very strong on this track, as it is on most of the tracks on this album, but I just noticed it a little more on this album, this particular song. Um, Back to the Family. Um, this is a top track for me, probably my favorite track on side one. If you're doing albums, this would be side one. Uh, vocals are great on this track. Um, some really memorable kind of guitar stuff going on here as well. Just super, I think Martin Barr added so much to this group. Um, then we get to the last track on this side. Uh, it's kind of a melancholy song, but it's so good. Like they, uh, Ian Anderson really knows how to milk that melancholy part. He's just so good at it, at the singing. He's got the perfect voice for it, too. Uh, Look Into the Sun. That's the name of this track. Okay, so we flip to now. Flip If we're on an LP, we'd be flipping it over. And this would be the first track on side two. It's the sixth track on the album. Uh, Nothing is easy. Some more great flute here. Some great drum and guitar work on this song. And this is the first track on side two which you know i've been on i've listened to a couple of other channels one channel did uh, uh list your favorite perfect sides to an album this would definitely qualify side two or side b if you prefer on the stand up is to me perfect um and uh, usually it's this first side that gets that kind of edge but in this case it's definitely side two is perfect there's no to me, all five songs are perfect on this side. Um, this one starts it out as probably the least of the five tracks, but it's by far a really good song. You know, nothing is easy. Uh, the next track, Fat Man, gonna be a classic with me at some point. It's gonna make my top five or six, I'm sure of it. Uh, I, 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 
I find myself singing this song all the time at work. Um, uh, me and a friend of mine have a joking thing about it all the time going on. And I think it's the best track. It has some great lyrics on it. Um, there's an intense part where all four instruments, uh, the bongos, the mandolin, the bass, and, and I think the flute are all like just like pounding it out, like just so tight, so good. Um, I'm, and I've seen this track live where they're all sitting at the front of the stage um, uh, singing this track out and it's just really good, so good. Um, I think it's definitely a, a top track on this, my favorite track on this particular album. Okay, the last three songs, all really good. Um, probably, if, you know, I was ranking this songs on this album, they would be like... And in the, in all three of them would make the top five. So, I mean, the whole side of the album, of course, as you know, is really good. Um, some, so the next track, which is We Used To Be, We Used To Know. Um, vocals are great, similar. It's very similar to the track uh, looking at this Under The Sun. There's a lot of the very similarities here. A lot of interplay with the guitar and the... Uh, flute I think on yeah like they do flute does a solo followed by a guitar solo followed by a little more flute followed by a little more guitar and then together like really really cool um the, nat the ninth song reason for waiting is where um there's an or kind of an orchestral sound here to um uh for uh Dee Palmer who does the orchestral part on this and he uh He's really good. He's, the song comes together really well. It's got a, a, like another thing, mournful, a mournful sound to it. Uh, more fluty, a lot of acoustic guitar. You know, just you know, it's just it's just such a standard sound for Jethro Tull. You know, I just think this this tune is is come up in my estimation quite a bit since I've gotten the album. Um, this and the last track uh, are m moving up quite a bit. They may actually overtake Fat Man, which is find it hard to believe, but they're just so good, right? Okay, so the last track on the album is Four Thousand Mothers. Heavy track, probably the heaviest track. I think it's the heaviest track on the album. Lots of uh, like acoustic, uh, lots of guitar and lots of um, flute and like just really heavy. And the drums are heavy at the beginning as well, so just everything's heavy. It's and, and it's almost almost a hard. I think it's almost a hard rock song. Hard to hard to classify this album. It's it's got it's lots of blues elements in it. So you know, having done the tracks now, I'll just talk about the album in general. It's got lots of it's got a heavy kind of bluesy influence in it, but there's you can see that they're moving away and becoming more progressive. Um, there's a lot of that element on it as well. Uh, lots of soloing, flute, electric guitar. Even the bass does a little bit of soloing as well. Drums have a, a little bit of a soloing part at the beginning of For a Thousand Mothers. Just like, it just, you know, and you can see there's the beginnings of more of a folky sound to their music as well. And that, you know, that to me is when you hear a lot of the acoustic and and the uh, bongos in there and then the mandolin as well which is tastefully done in the songs that it's used in so my overall feel for the album is that it's great it's heavy but not super heavy it's got a bluesy sound the vocals are fantastic the instrumentation is off the charts and the songs themselves are really well done and really really memorable songs like uh, there's like I said, there's no weak tracks on the album. So if I say that I love this album at this stage of the game I mean it, you know, like I mean it like it's probably right now It's been on my playlist for about five five months. It's probably neck and neck with uh, The Tea Party album that I really love as well uh, They're both very different albums like there's I mean you know they're well done both of them and there's no really bad tracks on either albums but i just like tea party just a little bit more but not by much like it you know this this album could take over any day and then take over the 
number one spot and I wouldn't be at least bit surprised by it so there you have it stand up by Jethro Tull um, another great album from Tull and this one actually I think started it, it it's to me it's it started a run of God probably 12 really good albums I don't I can't think of another group I can't think of another group in my top in my t in my group of eight or even in any group that has well they, they'd be in my group of eight if they had that many but I can't think of another group that has so many good albums in a row um, and even the ones on the fringe like the one the number one at the first album which is a little bit different even that's not bad and then the stuff at the top that's just maybe beyond this this run that they have that's good too so I mean you know I just think there's about 10 or 12 albums in a row here and this one starts it off and starts it off in class and and I just I just think this is a fantastic album so if uh, you haven't started listening to Jethro Tull this is a good good start because it's not as complicated as maybe some of the albums that come later but the music is real catchy um, usually with some bands that I most bands that I really like over time they tend to start out I have a hard time getting into them uh, they're hard to penetrate Jethro Tull I've never had that issue with uh, except for the very first time I listened to them because the first album I ever owned by them was probably um, Aqualung you know or it was the masters album that I had and it took me a long time to get into those two albums but once I acquired the taste as they said um, it, it becomes a much easier listen to now this one just took right off right away as same as War Child which I did recently as well so I hope you uh, get a chance to listen to this uh, because you'll love it um, so please let me know if you like Please like and subscribe. I appreciate it. And uh, tell me, uh, tell me how what you think about this album. So from Prog Monster, you have a good day.